time to crack open a cold one here, boys, because I got some hot takes to tell you. So now that like uh, enough prerequisite time has actually passed since uh, that John Wick 4 movie came out, can we just all agree that that movie was kind of um, mid? I mean, I doesn't say that it was bad or necessarily anything like that. I mean, for an action American film, it is actually a fairly high quality, at least for the sense of American film, because for the longest time, action in American film has either been relegated to the Marvel superhero super floaty camp that looks cartoonish, or to the overly shaky camp to the point where you can't understand what the heck is going on. Taken 3, for example there, prime shaky cam with an excessive amount of cuts to the point where I didn't even know what was going on, it just felt like I was having an epileptic fit. Now this is only a 10 second clip and yet, despite that, my head already hurts looking at this. Oh, we thought this was a good idea for a film. <laughs> but John Wick 4, for as long of a movie as it is, my god, it was the few movies that I've actually seen in a long time where I was actually tempted to walk out of it. In fact, there was actually people walking out of it when I was looking at it. And not to be fair, this is not like a overly crowded theater with a lot of people. Like, this was a couple of months after it had recently launched, and the people, there might have been like, what, two dozen people in there? And at least two people left. Which, for a film like that, is pretty impressive. But I can kind of understand it too, because this film is, what, three, over three hours long? Actually, wait, let me take a look at this. Okay, sorry, scratch that. It was two... 0.81 hours or 169 minutes which is um still incredibly long still not as long as something like the avatar way of the water film but it gets up there like when it comes to cinema lengths that is stretching it for a long time and i can't imagine what it's like in anyone who didn't have an absolutely comfortable viewing experience like me like i go to a bougie theater that has reclining seats that are heated so it is actually fairly nice and fairly enjoyable regardless of what it is but that length alone means that if you're going to stretch out a film like that you have to have absolutely immaculate pacing in order not to bore people to tears and in this film the pacing was all over the place sure there was approximately 49 minutes of combat but let me tell you not all combat is created equal i mean there are some absolutely excellent uh, Asian films that came out in the 80s or 90s, especially with those with like Jackie Chan that had this absolutely beautifully choreographed fight scenes that are absolutely fantastic to look at. And they're not that terribly long compared to some of the absolutely bloated extended fight scenes within this John Wick film. I mean, I remember the specific thing where they're in the Japanese hotel, which to be fair, that's not a spoiler. It's not a relevant plot point at all. They're just there to be there. And my god, the fights in that scene were atrocious. I shouldn't say atrocious. They were alright for like the first 10 minutes. And then after that, I was just like, oh my god. How many times is someone just going to walk at John Wick and then he's just going to grab their gun and like, you know, swing around, wrap both of his legs around the neck and then take him down. I swear he did that at least like 30 times throughout that film. It was absurd. Also, why were those the only people in the entire film that were headed to covered in body armor? Why in the rest of the film did no one have body armor to that caliber? <laughs> and the thing is too, because these fight scenes were so long, the quality of them was not terribly high either. I mean, compare those to like the scenes that I've seen on the uh, stunt people react to fight scenes of X, Y, or Z movie. And then I see this and I'm just like, like there's no interesting things happening here. It's just like a straight standard like shootout fight. And which is fine, but then again, there's 49 minutes of fight scenes here, and these are very visually intense, and they can be somewhat like a draining on you. Like if you look at something that's intense and very, you know, simulating for a long time, eventually you're just kind of like, yep, all right, I am looking other places now. I'm gonna take a nap now real quickly. Uh, and speaking of the quality of about those fights again, there was points of it in which, you know, I was getting bored and I was looking at the background character to see what they do. Because if you want to see like how badly choreographed some fights are, just look at what the background characters are doing sometimes. Like, they'll randomly spin, they'll randomly fall over, they'll just do random stuff while waiting to get hit. And in the case of the John Wick form, there was this hilarious scene where he's fighting only two people. So there's three people in the frame. You know, John Wick and then two baddies. And then he's beating up one of the baddies with, you know, some pan combat or whatever bull crap. And, like, he, like, lightly taps this one off to the side, and he's just flailing against the drum. Like, he's being possessed by a ghost. Like, it's sucking him off in the middle there. He's like, ah! Like, it's it just obnoxious how bad it was. And again, this wouldn't be offensive. It's just a little quick little fight scene, and boom. Okay, they're already on to the next plot point. No, these drag out for minutes at a time. Like, I'm trying to put this in, like, a gamer or video game context. Like, imagine you're playing Batman Arkham Knight, and you're just facing 
hordes of low-level enemies that you defeated like 30 minutes ago or like hours of playtime before, and you just have to fight wave after wave after wave after wave after wave until you get to the next story point. Like it just feels like padding, which I guess makes sense because this film is, you know, 169 minutes long, nearly three hours long. But the thing is, I could forgive all of that, like the extended fight scenes that kind of loop around and feel heavily redundant that could be chopped in half. You know, whatever, I could handle those fight scenes because there's only 49 minutes of it. What I can forgive after that is that the whole supporting structure around the film is also incredibly mid. Like, I understand, like, I watched John Wick 1 and 2, I barely remember anything from those, and I never watched 3. So, my expectations into this is, like, I was just going to expect a generic amount of action and a very bland story. But my god, that expectation was not even met. I mean, besides all the contrivances with the rules just randomly popping out of left, right, and center, to completely negate around like the little writer's blocks they managed to put themselves in. The actual acting themselves is not the strongest thing. While some of the actors are able to deliver some of the lines pretty good, the lines themselves are just atrocious and very, very basic. Like almost first draft level, like a template, like ChatGTP wrote these lines. And then you have some either very like unemotional or stoic or just very flat, like deliveries from some of the actors that are actually delivering these lines, which again, are not very plentiful. So then you realistically don't have like a very compelling story with very deeply developed characters, especially considering this is a 169 minute, nearly three hour film that does not have very good character depth here. And they always do that tropey thing where they kill off a random side character that's very nice in order to actually give some emotional appeal. And in fact, they do it like what, two or three times in this film to absolutely no effect for absolutely no regard other than just to further the story along. Like, it's an absolutely terrible writing trope that if you actually don't know how to put any emotion into the film or any sort of stakes, you just blow up a major landmark or you kill off a character or something like that. It reminds me a lot of in the sequels where they just blew up one of the capitals of the Empire or the New Republic or whatever it was called. And yet I felt absolutely nothing, even though that probably over a trillion people just died in that scene. And yet I legitimately felt nothing. And I feel like this is like on that same level here where it's just death with absolutely no impact whatsoever. And again, I, I spoil this, but I haven't given out like actual specific names or characters of it. But at the same time too, it literally does not matter for the entirety of the plot. In fact, a whole section with the Japan segment completely just could be chopped out of that whole movie and you would not lose anything other than aesthetics. Now, I don't want to be all negative here too. I mean, there is some interesting characters, at least with the side characters, that have unique quirks or little gimmicks here that can make them somewhat interesting. And they do elevate the film somewhat. But again, these are all side characters here. And side characters don't necessarily make a whole film unless that's the whole, you know, premise of it. Also, on a side note, I, I don't understand what the... Thing is with this plot armor i understand that john wick is not supposed to you know perish until whatever designated time he's supposed to but the absolute ineptitude of some of these snipers or some of the actual gunmen within this thing completely blows my mind like why the majority of the actual baddies that are attempting to kill john wick all approach him and walk up to him despite having rifles with probably armor penetrating rounds you know something they could actually go through their well-known bulletproof vests that every single character in this game, or this, I shouldn't say game, in this movie actually wears. Why do they walk up to John Wick? They know he's there. Throw a grenade. You know, go around him. Do something. Go in a helicopter. Why are you all walking to him? Why? Also, how are you all losing to them against, like, there was a scene legitimately with bows and arrows, and somehow they're losing against that. I'm thinking, these are supposed to be, like, some of the most highly trained assassins, highly trained marksmen in the world, and they're being beat by some Weird bullcrap. I, I, I just... It, the suspension of disbelief kind of doesn't work when you're dealing with hyper-trained people and you're dealing with it for 49 minutes straight with extremely... Oh my god. I, I I can just keep on going on with that, but I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. I will say, though, another good thing, music in this film. Absolutely fantastic music and isn't well overplayed here. Now, I don't remember any of the actual songs here, but the fact is that I didn't offend me. That at least can be a benefit because there are some movies in which they use the emotional weight of some of the tracks to really drive home the emotion of it. They really don't need it in this film. They can just let the action do bing, bang, boom, and they can just let that be entertaining enough. Plus, they did have some interesting shot composition where they actually had like an above perspective while this person was clearing a room. Now, why the fact the person was clearing a room in a circle and they kept retreading old ground, I don't know, felt like a very padded out video game, but hey, at least it was an interesting perspective. And some of the colors on it too definitely made this film a little bit more artisanal. In fact, they just go with absolute flat colors and made it super dark, which to be fair, a lot of the scenes were super dark, but not in like an overly distracting way or an overly obscuring way. 
So it felt alright. But again, this is one of these films where they legitimately could cut out half the action scenes because the majority of it is redundant. And that would probably actually pick up the pace considerably. They could chop out that whole, like, 30 to 40 minute segment with Japan that is completely unnecessary, completely misses the plot, and really only serves to slightly introduce some concepts with the blind assassin, which is then never reviewed again. But thank you all for joining my lovely, lovely rambling today. What do you guys actually think about the nice John McFour film? Did you guys enjoy it? What was your favorite aspect about it? Leave it down below. We'll go ahead and talk about it. But beyond that, I want to thank you all again for joining me this fine fabulous this evening. If you enjoyed what you see, feel free to follow what platform is your favorite. We've got that YouTube and that Twitch. We also have Twitter and Discord down below if you want to get notified whenever I go live, as well as just join the community. But beyond that, I want to thank you all again. Feel free to click that join button down below if you want to become a part of the community for only 99 cents a month and get access to nice level level emotes, polls, and whatever else exclusive content that I decide to release. Who the devil knows? But beyond that, I want to thank you all again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.